everybody a very warm welcome to you all and just a huge thank you for this opportunity i'm absolutely delighted to be here i would like to personally thank the whole of the baby yum yum team as well as kath mcgore for making this wellness workshop happen it is such an honor to be a part of this and to have the opportunity to all learn and grow together my name is sarah overholzer and i've been in practice for almost five years i've experienced working in one of the biggest neonatal ICU divisions in KwaZulu-Natal, where I worked with infants and in, that had many feeding difficulties. I currently work in a pre-primary and primary school in, in Claremont in the Western Cape, and I've just started my own private practice called Align Therapy. This is in a field that I'm particularly interested in and passionate about, and that is of early intervention and feeding therapy, particularly work, working towards creating an optimal foundation for development to take place for the child. So just a bit of background on me. I was never your typical speech therapist as I always had a huge interest in, uh, in how diet and food affects us as, in, as humans in general, as well as in the area of neurology where of course our emotions and communication come into play. This is very important when it comes, in, comes to the support and the treatment of our children, especially when we may when they may have feeding difficulties and how this can have an effect on their behavior so just to start off i want to speak about the importance of a functional and holistic approach as a practitioner so here i just feel we cannot afford to separate the human body all of the systems in our body are intertwined and it's therefore vital to support the, our children's bodies and brains and, and thus we need to better understand them. It's fundamental to take this all into consideration when we help support our children, bearing in mind the environmental factors. So for example, we need to take into consideration the child's home environment. What, is the what are the family dynamics like? Do they have siblings? Are they feeling stressed at home? Are they feeling relaxed? Um, and yeah, this, if they are going to school or play, play school, um, what is the environment like? What are the teachers like? What are their friends? And um, also looking at other stresses like emotional and psychological well-being of the child. Um, I always like to, to give this example that I learned. I went to a conference and they were speaking about how children learn in different environments and how, to, it, how they feel affects how they learn. And it was for special needs, but this can be applied to development in children in general. And it just it just said that it, it took a child up to 400 neuro repetitions to learn something under a, a, a situation where they were feeling anxious or stressed compared to 11 neuro repetitions when they're feeling relaxed and confident and then mostly learning through play based um, environments. And I just thought that this is so important because it shows um, the importance of children's emotions when growing, learning and developing, which, as we know, um, includes feeding and how a child eats. So I also like to have the approach that we all have different strengths and different weaknesses. So let's build up on the strengths and give tool, tools that aid the weaknesses. The topic today is something we can take into consideration for our children and for ourselves. <laughs> the microbiome has been said to be a, a burgeoning area of study within the medical research community for over a decade. So let's just go to that word burgeoning. I love the definition because it means beginning to grow or increase rapidly or to flourish. So it just shows that it's a really exciting new flourishing field of research um, that needs to be taken into consideration. The initiation of the human, the human microbiome project by the National Institute of Health started in 2007. But the idea that there are a variety of microbes living on and within the human body is not itself a new concept. There was a scientist who, um, whose name was Anthony van Leeuwenhoek and he was around um, it, between 1632 and 1723. And that was um, when things first started, he started to do the research on the microbiome. And it has taken quite some time since then 
for scientists to understand more about these microbes and that they are more than just pathogens or bad bacteria, but microbes, microbes help maintain the health and well-being um, of us as humans. The human microbiota is a complex organism composed of trillions of microbial cells, such as different bacteria. The most varied microbiome, however, is found in no other than the gastrointestinal tract, or the GI tract, which we call the gut. Um, it is believed to have a far-reaching metabolic, nutritional, and immunological effect on human health. And this fragile, this fragile ecosystem continues to evolve after birth. So this is what really excites me. It's those first thousand days, so until, until a child is about three years old, that are most important um, for, the, for the foundation of developing that, that gut. But I just want to point out that it's not, our, our bodies continue to heal themselves. So if we, if we only figure figure this out or get inf intervention afterwards, like I myself personally have had to do, um, it's still going to help um, to heal that gut um, lining or to help our bodies be able to digest nutrition better for, for our mental and um, physical well-being. So I just want to highlight that, um, yes, those first thousand days are important, but we can still help after that as well, of course. Um, and this, um, this development continues and is shaped by multiple, multiple factors, including the adaptive and the innate immune system, external factors such as diet, um, antibiotics, and, and, and toxic exposures, as well as stress, and there you go, emotional, behavioral, and illnesses. So let's dive in. The link. So what exactly does this mean? The gut-brain axis is the bi-directional, so going two ways, communication between the gut and the brain, affecting our children's mood and behavior. Neurogastroenterology um, is a subspeciality of gastroenterology, and it overlaps with neurology. It's the study of the brain, the gut, and their interactions, which we also call the gut-brain axis. And it's a fascinating area of research with a growing knowledge base. Researchers are furthering their understanding of the delicate connections between the human gastrointestinal microbiota and the brain. So in 2017, researchers saw an association between the gut microbiota and the brain regions involved in processing sensory information. So this is absolutely key when it comes to feeding and with our children because Food, of, a, of course, involves many sensory um, needs, and it, this includes taste, texture, smell, temperature, how it looks. So all of these sensory processes are taking place and has a link to our gut. So the bidirectional communication along the gut-brain axis involves many organ systems, which include the endocrine system. So these are the, the body's hormones, which are also very important for growth and development of our babies and children. Then also the immune system. So of course, our body's defense mechanism. So keeping us healthy, not getting sick. And then the autonomic or um, central and enteric nervous system. So of course, here yeah, we know that the brain is very much included. The intestinal microbiota influence these interactions. The signals along the axis can originate in the gut in the brain or in both, the objective is to maintain normal gut function and therefore appropriate behavior and communication between these two organs. So emotions and feelings need to be considered. So looking at the child's behavior is really important. The emotions and feelings of our children have an impact on the body and vice versa. For example, with anxiety and also the serotonin or dopamine link. Serotonin and dopamine are active in the brain as well as in the gut. And some research shows that up to 90% of serotonin is actually produced in the gut. So we know that this is really important for just that happy hormone, feeling good, feeling positive, um, and that's all related to behavior of a child. These neurotransmitters regulate not only blood flow, but also influence gut mobility, so the way the gut is able to move, 
nutrient absorption, which of course is fundamental, and then the gastrointestinal innate um, immune system and the microbiome. So let's just go through the innate or non-specific immunity. So it's defined as the defense system with which you were born, and it protects you against all antigens and involves barriers that keep harmful materials from entering your body. These barriers form the first line of defense in the immune response. Okay, so very important role there. And then also the microbiome. So this is defined as the collection of microbes. So for example, such as bacteria, fungi, viruses, and their genes um, that naturally live on our bodies or inside of us. Although microbes are so small that they require a microscope to see them, they contribute in big ways to human health and wellness. So we all know wellness um, includes mental health and mental wellness as well, um, which links to the behavior. So anxiety and depressive disorders may be characterized by a higher abundance of pro-inflammatory micro microbiota and less short-chain fatty acid producing bacteria. So just to touch on that um, inflammation, so if there's a high abundance of um, microbiota causing inflammation, the, the gut is going to be um, it's going to increase in size, it's going to expand. And because of that, the lining becomes a lot thinner. And there may be little gaps um, that um, allow for undigested food to leak through the gut, which is not a good thing. <laughs> um, and then the short chain fatty acid producing bacteria is very important. So these short chain fatty acids um, are byproducts of plant fiber. So when they're digested, um, this is produced. And these short chain fatty acids are vital for the sealing and the repair of the gut lining. So they just keep it really intact and um, in shape so that it's not, um, it's not ultimately changing its shape and having little holes in the lining. And um, so really important to keep the inflammation down and to have short chain fatty acids as byproducts from these bacteria. Um, so scientists just str a struggle to discover whether the brain and behavior changes precede gut dysfunction or dysbiosis in, or imbalance or vice versa. So it's a bit of a chicken or the egg scenario. Um, so for example, research has shown that episodes of anxiety and depression may be experienced more frequently in patients with, with gut or GI disorders like irritable bowel syndrome. Okay, so just a bit of application. Um, we need to be considering the root cause of symptoms in order to best support our children. And this requires a multidisciplinary team approach for sure. I feel so strongly about this because we need to be working together with all our, with all our uh, specialities and um, professions to be able to best support the child and their family. It's so crucial to be supporting the family through this all. For example, a child who struggles with food or textures, who might be hyper or hypo um, sensitive, so having increased sensitivity or decreased sensitivity whilst eating, um, who also might be prone or predisposed to anxiety, may struggle with food and eating more when he is more anxious. So we want to treat, we need to treat and best support the anxiety taking into consideration the home environment, if they're at school, the school environment, friends, um, teachers, stresses, siblings, um, as well as supporting the gut microbiome with nutritional foods, bearing in mind the serotonin and dopamine considerations and their role in mood regulation and behavior. So we know that a, that a lot of, of these hormones are actually related to and produced in the gut. So we want that gut to be nice and healthy and supported as best as possible to support the mood and behavior of the child. Um, they may need some emotional support through counseling, depending on the age of the child, or there may be an issue with the gut, which has been linked to susceptibility to increased anxiety. So for example, a food sensitivity or an allergy, which may cause inflammation in the GI tract. And this may need to be addressed by a functional doctor or a dietitian. And remember that we want to enhance their strengths and give tools for their weaknesses. 
a child having difficulty focusing or paying attention. So we want to ask questions like, what makes up the child's diet? Even what did, what did they have for breakfast? We know how we start our day is so important for setting up um, yeah, good, a good foundation of um, blood stabilizing um, uh, food so that we don't have spikes of sugar, which of course affects our moods. Um, and whatever the diet is, we want to know that their gut bugs are, are what they are feeding and living off. So this is really important. We want to feed the good gut bugs, so bacteria, gut bugs, <laughs> in order for them to grow and for there to be a balance in the gut microbiome. So I spoke about the balance earlier, and this is really, really key. We want to have a nice balanced um, gut micro microbiome, so good and bad bacteria. Um, and so we need, to, we need to know that feeding the good um, bacteria is full of producing nice foods with um, plant fibers and you know, that are rich in fiber, with, rich in probiotics and um, mostly whole foods. On, on that note, like my mom says, all things in moderation. And I feel it's the same when it comes to looking after, after our children's guts. We want balance is the key. A good way to optimize and help develop a child's gut microbiome is to include foods high in plant-based fibers and probiotic rich foods. We also want to keep our foods as whole and as natural as possible, focusing on less sugar and refined or processed foods. Starting the day with a blood sugar stabilizing breakfast, low in sugar and high in fiber is an excellent way to start the day and to set up their bodies for optimal growth, development, focus um, to learn and ultimately to excel. Thank you so much for your time and I hope that this helped. Thanks, bye.